And uh, all right, it's 7.01, let's open the meeting. We do have a quorum. Our current membership is five. Uh, Justin was reappointed by Montpelier, so, uh, and you took your oath today? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was able to get in contact with them. Sure, and uh, Kim uh, will be- Somebody needs to start the recording. Uh, no, Orca is doing the recording. No, we they asked that it. you make a backup. They asked nope. that you make a backup. I'm they not doing not a backup, Stephen. I'm not doing a backup. That's why we have Orca. You're required that Orca is not a reliance. You're required by the law on virtual only meetings to make a recording. Yeah, and the recording is being made by Orca. <laughs> you're not sure so, of that, are you? Uh, you're out of order, Stephen. Thank you for your comments, but you're out of order. So are we are looking at the agenda? Any additions to the agenda or changes? I have a couple that I'm uh, really embarrassed that I forgot. One is after the minutes, we're gonna talk about the organizing meeting on which is by the charter the first Wednesday of April. I'd also like to add after the discussion of the telecommunication work, uh, Jim Ward would like to do a short video on some training, is that correct, Jim? Well, it's a funding request for some training and I have a video that shows what I'd like to do. Yep, okay. And then under other business, we have some open meeting law violations uh, we need to deal with. Anything else that would need to be added besides these two things that, that I've mentioned? So moved. Okay, and if there's no objection, the agenda with those two modifications will be approved by unanimous consent. Uh, public comment for anything that's not on the agenda? Uh, I have comment. Okay, it's not on the agenda. It's not on the agenda. Uh, I, for some reason, I just, Discovered that the I went back through the minutes and there were two committee chairs appointed uh, last summer or fall to uh, complete uh, charter change recommendations and outreach to get other member towns to join. And I discovered recently that neither of those had done any work uh, on those. I haven't seen any evidence in the minutes of any charter change recommendations nor and I've corresponded with Doug about outreach to towns and none of that has happened. And that's, it's very time critical and those things need to be moved forward. Uh, those committees were dissolved and we appointed liaisons. I can go back and find you the minutes for that, Stephen. Any other comments? Okay, Don, I'm sorry. How the how, yeah, how is the liaison gonna draft charter changes? Uh, uh, Stephen? You made your statement. I'm letting you just know that those committees were dissolved and we, as a board, we appointed people as liaisons for outreach and website work. And charter? I have to go back to the minutes. And I said, as I told you, I'll go back to the minutes. But what we found was people were finding it really difficult without staff to follow all the rules and have committee <clears throat> meetings. So that's what we did. Uh, Kim, you wanted to say something under public comments? No, I want to know where you were on the agenda. I'm sorry, I was five minutes late. Yep. It's, uh, we're at approving minutes of February 10th now. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I do have a comment on that. Um, on second page, discussion of CFMAS MOU. So I'd like the minutes to reflect that in my comments, I said that I said a memorandum of what I thought the agreement between us was. And the way most people react to such a thing is if they agree with it, they say yes. If they say no, um, they give reasons why. And you have an opportunity to discuss and resolve your differences. 
and that's what I that's why I wanted to meet with them. Um, it wasn't that I was um, wanting them not to be board members. I wanted them to come up with a better relationship with the organization. Uh, which I think actually um, Brent did in that very first sentence on the second line to meet with um, Capital FAR to determine what they hope to gain from participating in the Public Safety Authority. Okay. So but I, that, that was just summary of, of the discussion, which I thought pretty nailed it. it. Well, I don't think it is a complete summary of the discussion and I'd like it to be corrected. Okay, well, I'm going back because you, you sort of started, I thought, the MOU discussion in one place, but ultimately I thought you ended where Brent summarized. Uh, so you want to try to give me some more distinct wording, like a one sentence I can put in here? Yes. You want that, that I ask the, the, uh, Towns will call them CFMAS to tell me why they disagreed with my analysis of their agreement and to have a discussion as to if they thought my analysis was wrong, why, and did they want to talk about improving our relationship. And, and you remember saying that at the meeting, not in That's, your MOU. Okay. No, I absolutely said that. Okay, and other people, are you all right with that amendment? I, I, I don't remember that happening, so help me out, Pope people. You, why the towns disagree with Kim's approach? They should tell me why. Um, um, if they disagreed with it, we should have a discussion about why and what we can do about it. Kind of normal relationships with, when you're talking about a contract. Okay, but you're talking about towns versus capital FAR. <laughs> no, I'm talking about CFMAS. Okay, so no, but you, I'm sorry, I wrote the word down towns because that's what I thought you said. Okay. No. So, so why Capital Far Mutual Aid disagreed? Then they should say why. Yep. And, okay, what? and we should have a discussion about um, either proper interpretation of the agreement or. How about have what? discussion on interpretation? Okay and possible changes to, uh, for a new relationship. Okay, board, if others comfortable with that, I need some thumbs up, thumbs down. Two. Okay, well, uh, see, Kim's going to be a thumb up. Jim was a thumb up. Yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> Justin was a thumb up. And three now is our quorum, so it'll pass. So we'll add that to the minutes. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Okay, entertain a motion to approve the minutes as amended with Kim's amendment. So moved. Thank you, Doug. Second. I'll second it. Thank you. Uh, I think Justin beats you on the hand up, but that's good. All right. All in favor, say aye or wave your hand. Aye. Aye. All opposed, say nay or wave your hand. Terrific. Passes unanimous. Uh, update on uh, Capital Farm Mutual Aid oh, organizational me meeting. That was what I put in there. Organizational meeting is next. The charter says the first Wednesday of the month, which would be April 6th. Is it the board's pleasure to have it on Wednesday, April the 6th? 
or to change it to our regular meeting date of April 14th, Thursday. Is there any disadvantage to moving it to the 14th? No, I mean, just what people's schedule are. If people can attend on the 6th, um, the charter mainly wants to make sure you have it, set, a, set a, a date to have it by the 1st, you know, April 1st. We have our regular meeting on a Thursday, the second Thursday. So we could change it to that. Would this mean two, two meetings in April? No, no, we would just have the organizational meeting at our regular meeting. We would incorporate it. That would be my preference. You wanna make a motion to that? Sure, I move that we have the organizational meeting at our regular meeting on April 14th. Second. Okay, Jim, second. Further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so our next meeting, April 14th, will also be our organizational meeting, and that's when we elect officers. So we desperately need a secretary, <laughs> but you could be nominating yourself for any office you'd like. All right, next on the agenda is the update to Capital Farm Mutual Aid membership in the Public Safety Authority. Uh, Skip did let me know, and he actually sent a letter, which I forwarded to the board. I can uh, share on my screen if, if anybody wants to hear the see the actual words. Um, if you haven't got a chance to read it. Well, I just read it, Nana, so. Okay, well, there it is. Um, I went through the memo and I couldn't find anything there that talked about their departure. The full charter members have a procedure and have a year lapse from the time they decide and vote to depart. But the full charter members have to vote by their resident voters, whereas Capital Far just has their immediate membership. Is there anyone objects to accepting their letter with the immediate request for immediate withdrawal? Well, I have a yes and a no. They're not actually members. They were not members sharing in the cost. Yeah. What they're saying is they, they want to exit the contract. The, the MOU, MOA. yes. Uh -huh. No, the MOA, the, the Memorandum of Agreement. I guess and I only have the MOU, OK. Well, MOA, the MO, sorry. The I MO, used the wrong letter. You're right, MOA, yep, yeah. the memo. Yeah. Yeah, because it's different than an MOU that has cost sharing and everything in it. Yes. So if they want to terminate that agreement rather than talking about it, I don't have any objection, but I, I can't accept their letter because I think it should say they want to terminate the memorandum and agreement. Okay, oh, okay. Uh, I, I thought there might be some people who want this to be more exact, but others might want to accept it. Jim? I think this discussion is kind of fruitless. They've made a decision to withdraw and how it's characterized and, and defined and, and uh, how the hairs are split really is irrelevant. They've decided not to participate at this point. And I would suggest we send them a letter re regretting their decision and if there wanted to be some clarification that we're assuming that this means you're ending the, the MOA or the MOU, whichever it is, um, we can put that in there. But I, <clears throat> I don't think it's worthy of any further discussion. I am myself personally very disappointed to see them leave. Well, I am too. I... Could you turn off the screen share so I can see people, Donna? Thank you. Actually, that was my motion, Jim, that just tell them that we regard the agreement between us as terminated and accept the termination. Okay, so Jim, are you making a motion to that effect and Kim is sure. seconding it? Yeah, I'll make the motion that we 
um, accept their letter um, with regrets, send them a letter accepting their mm -hmm. withdrawal with regrets and an explanation of or a reference to our understanding is that you are terminating the law. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I am Any? open to revision of that, Kim, if you wanted to say the clarifying statement a little bit differently. Well, I think he said what I suggested. But you said it, that we're accepting the letter with regrets, and that's their intention is to terminate the MOA, the, the agreement. Yes. That's... Okay. Uh, any for any discussion about that motion? Oh, does it include a letter to them, a response to them? Yes, that's what sending yeah, a letter. That was my motion. Yes. We accept your letter with regrets. And we're accepting it as a termination of the agreement. I would like that letter to also include uh, the thought process that just because we're ending the formal agreement, uh, we would like to include you on our mailing list and, and encourage you to continue to participate in our discussions because our input is valid no matter what. I'll accept that as a Friendly motion, yeah. Friendly okay. email. I, I, that's, I must say, I did say that to them uh, in when I was talking to Skip. He called me, and I said, "Well, you know, I hope that you'll continue to work with us." And they have every intention of still being involved and in sharing resources, expertise, and etc. Okay. Any other comments on the letter? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Uh, update on board members. Some of you weren't here earlier. Um, Justin was reappointed by Montpelier City Council. Kim was elected. Congratulations, Kim. And so Justin's term is two years. Last time you were picking up a incomplete term. So now you have two years. So you'll expire. You'll expire. Your term will expire in 2024. Please don't expire. We can't afford to, <laughs> we can't afford to have you leave. <laughs> and Kim is uh, elected three years. His term will expire in 2025. Okay. Uh, next on anything else other than to glad that you're all here. And I believe that Steve uh, McKenzie reassured me that Barry will be replacing Paul, looking for um, someone to fill that slot. So that's good. Yeah, Don, I just I would just comment it's not going to happen overnight. I've got to follow yeah. our council appointment solicitation and and an appointment process. So I'll I'll get that started. Hey, you got what you do? Hit somebody? Can you I see it? <laughs> I I I. I was out in the backyard. I tripped over the lead to my dog and fell forward. And of course, uh, my hand couldn't have hit snow. It hit ice. So I just, I, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, I don't want to use the word fracture. It's a crack in the, in the outside bone. And my dog yeah, said, know, if, I, if I do this. You're going time, out, Stephen, this gets a little suspicious. Yeah. You're using so much medical time your last year. Yeah. My doc says if it happens one more time, he's going to outfit me with training wheels. Okay. Well, I think you better uh, be careful of those leashes, Steve. Uh, they'll get you every time. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. It's it's, but it was my fault. As much as I want to blame it on the dog, it was not his fault. <laughs> yeah. Blame it on city council. They made the leash law. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know if we've accepted Brent Householder's resignation, and I don't frankly know legally whether we have to or not we, we I, never have in the past but we yeah, can certainly well, acknowledge his work he's tuned in yeah i don't know if he wants to say anything i'll miss him yeah uh, i don't know if he's listening or one of those people who's just walking around and hearing it in the background um but not only uh, did he re resign here? But he and his wife are, have both have jobs that really are in the Chittenden County area, and they're looking to um, move in, the, in that direction in the next six months. So 
He had initially offered to be treasurer, which I thought, cool. He's got the accounting, he's got the public safety, but he's uh, leaving our area. So um, we'll have to keep looking for somebody between now and next month, especially if, if anyone knows anyone. They could be accountant, not even know anything about public safety. We'll educate them, but they can share their skills with us. It would be really, really wonderful. Well, Brent can do it till he leaves. Oh, well, um, yes, <laughs> possibly, although he's he not leaving. Sorry. He's still not talking back. He, he said he was willing to maintain the website and post agendas and minutes, but that he didn't feel like he wanted to step into anything else. He's got his foot out the door already, you know, even if he's not packed yet. So, Brent, we thank you. <laughs> I guess he's not listening. Yeah. Um, so the, the next item is our uh, phase two telecommunication work. Uh, we actually have a couple of major decisions here. One is if we indeed like what Televate put out as an RFP proposal to go out and do the work of creating an equipment RFP and whether we like it enough that we want to do it as a sole source or we like the idea and we want to put it out to bid. What's the board's pleasure? Yeah, and Televate uh, is here. Uh, Rick Burt is here. Well, I'd like Rick Burt to respond to my questions. Well, first, I'd like us to have this other discussion before. This, those are, are like a breakdown. I, I'd like to first just talk about whether or not we like the idea of doing the RFP for equipment and if we feel like we can sole source it or go out to bid. Well, Jim? Yeah, I, I just had some fundamental questions that uh, arose uh, um, since Capital Five Mutual Aid pulled out. The, the question came up who are we doing it for if Capital Five Mutual Aid? is no longer a part of it. And as I said, I regret that. But Barry well, City and Mont part of it. They're, they're still customers in Montpelier. They've always been part of our region. I mean. Okay, so you, you're, because I, I was under the impression that Montpelier was going and Barry City was were going a separate direction with their own radio system. But you're talking about Montpelier's overlap. Well, that makes sense. So overlap from the dispatch onto the broader, radio system than just Montpelier and Barry City. Well, yes, and, and hopefully, I guess, even with the radios, that the Barry would want to be in sync with what Montpelier and anyone else in the region was going to be buying and part of be part of the network. Well, the question there, is, Barry's, Barry's not leaving, so why wouldn't we include them in this? I'm sorry? Barry's not leaving capital. Uh, the, so the Public Safety Authority, why would we not include that? Well, the question Barry said that was they asked. weren't interested in the simulcast um, and the that, radios. That could change. Yeah. But I mean, to me, we're still a regional system and people may be a member, may not. Even within Capital West with Montpelier, there's still towns that are going to benefit that are part of Capital FAR and some that aren't part of Capital FAR. Yeah, but if we're, serious, if we're serious about having um, a fallback position using Barry City's dispatching, then I think we need to include that. They need to be included in it. They voted to participate. Let's continue that process. If, if I can clarify my question, because I think we're getting a little a field of it. Um, the question that was asked of me was if Barry City is going its own direction along with Montpelier. They, they are collectively have a radio system plan that's going to be shared between the cities and not the other towns, a separate channel. Um, and Capital Fire was no longer on the board. The question they asked was, who's the one that's sending out the RFP and who, who do they send the... Uh, it, it comes back to the same old question that Kim's wrestled with all along. Who owns what and who who's... Who's who's, you know, managing it? Um, you know, I, I'm 
not necessarily saying that it's a bad thing. I'm just confused. I wasn't able to answer the question. Okay, well, maybe I'll go back to the purpose of the equipment RFP. And one is for any of us to use when we go talking to grantors, potential grantors, state legislators, town select boards, federal, Leahy, whoever is in his seat, is that this RFP of equipment is the next step from the report we got in August from Televate. And so it's a tool. I mean, we've seen Montpelier, Barry, both, and Capital Far have used the Televate study and, and will continue to be used to support their ideas. Here's evidence of our need. Here's a list of exact kind of equipment we need. So to me, the equipment RFP is a regional resource that any and all of us can use once it exists. And Montpelier expressed to me, they're definitely interested, both okay. as a council yeah. and as a uh, bill city manager working with their customers, Capital Far of the RFP, very specifically. So this is the creation of the RFP, but not necessarily the issuing of it? That's right. We can't issue it until we have money, and we can't get money until we get more detail in our equipment. Okay. Well, all right. So I, I see that stuff. It's a circle. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, even if um, the thing that to me is advantageous, given where we are now, I mean, we, Capital uh, Public Safety Authority with no staff, is that Montpelier is willing to use their staff to help usher this through with Televate to get this equipment RFP that anybody in the region then could use as a tool to get funding. Once we have funding, then this RFP is my understanding will need to be fine tuned, but not much, but it will need some fine tuning because when you go to a grant, maybe one place is where you go for the consoles, maybe another place is where you go for the, the radios and maybe another place for the tower. So, you know, there's, we're only limited by our imagination of how to use the information once we have it. Anybody, uh, Rick, you want to add to that, Doug? I do. I see your hand. Just a minute. I just wanted to. You're going to unmute yourself, Rick? There you go. Yes, ma'am. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, I, I, um, I, Happy to be here, and I'm glad we're we're still in conversation. I'm sorry about the uh, uh, what what happened to Capital Fire. I, well, I hope that doesn't change our outcome or progress. Um, what, do you have a specific question for me, Donna? Well, just talking about I was talking about what I felt was the use of the RF the equipment RFP that you'd be working on, as far as any entity, whether it's Public Safety Authority, Barry, Montpelier, Capital Far, going to their town, their legislators, the feds to get money and using so, that as a tool to show what we need. If Telemate is so fortunate to be uh, awarded the opportunity to support you, um, you would be able to use the RFP for, uh, you know, for those purposes. I mean, I uh, I, I think you know you've got a, you have a document in hand that shows that we're we're serious about it. We have a plan. We're ready to execute on that plan once we secure funding. So it is advantageous to have that. I certainly would 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 ensure that whoever is presenting it, you know, we either have a, a you know a PowerPoint presentation that they could use to drive the discussion, um, or they certainly are prepared uh, with their own notes of why. And I, I think that's a that's a coordinated effort that each of you that you know the board should be engaged in, depending on who's taking the lead. I mean, if the if everyone's going to do a, something independently, that's a different story. But but the way I had I, I, I had planned on structuring the RFP so that it was it 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 was kind of a, a sec it had various sections so that you know you could pull out pieces of it to use for say consoles or, or to purchase radios. Um, the, the, the value, the benefit of having a consolidated RFP is that you can typically negotiate for volume discounts. 
Um, and so th there's an advantage to, to purchasing, um, you know, uh, at least a, 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 you know, a, a single contract vendor um, or, you know, a vendor that, I mean, we, we do, you can go through the process of having a construction vendor, an A&E vendor, a radio vendor, you can, you know, all that, you could design your RP that you can buy from anyone, but that would be the purpose of it. The pur Until you have funding, you obviously cannot issue this because you don't have a funding vehicle or and no procurement department in the, in the region is going to accept that without a funding vehicle. So yes, the answer is that you know, you, you'd have a, a, a ready to go, we, we're ready. We just, we, you know, we're seeking um, funding to support our initiative. And that was what, that was one of the things that the group had asked for, you know, that's not, that was, that was a, you know, a goal that was established. Anyway, I, but I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. I said, I'd be here this month and answer questions. So whatever you want, however you want to go, you just let me know. Okay, I got two hands up. Um, uh, there's Kim and there's and there I have Justin. So Kim. Well, Rick, are you aware that the two cities have gotten a, a bid offer from Burlington Communications to get all the equipments that they want and a price to it? Uh, no, sir, I wasn't aware of that. I was aware though that before the project started, the Capital Fire had received. Um, a, a quote from them. And I, you know, so I, I was aware of that, but I wasn't aware that the, you know, the, the cities had done that. Um, no, this and, is a recent that, one. I just learned of it today. And uh, so there's a, the cities have already solicited a provider bid. And I think there's another potential provider is Tate Communications. Do they sure. serve this area? Uh, Tate is one of, I, I'd say for your market, there's probably four, maybe five vendors, Tate being one of them, um, Harris, Motorola, Tate, Kodan um, is another vendor. They do, uh, 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 they are, uh, I think they're an Australian <laughs> company with a US base. Um, they recently purchased Zetron, who does uh, radio consoles, and um, they have a simulcast radio network. So I think they they would they could probably participate. Um, so you know, if you're getting if you're receiving uh, bids from Burlington, I, I I don't know you know. I how... don't think it was was it really a bid, uh, Kim, or was it vendors presenting a proposal? It was a. I'm not sure. I think it was the vendors submitting a proposal. Yeah, it wasn't a, a formal bid. I don't. Yeah, believe, well, but... I mean, th th those are good to have. I mean, they obviously know your market. You know them. They're a good vendor. Um, uh, if, if you know, obviously, that's something that that you have relationships with them, and that makes sense to work with someone you have a relationship with. It. Uh, I um, uh, the, what we had discussed previously was you know a formal. RFP process so that you can ensure you have all your requirements designated. From my experience, um, if you don't define your requirements um, and you receive and accept um, a bid like that, you 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 don't have you know you don't have a contractual vehicle that you developed. I mean, you can develop it after the fact and make sure you get all the language in there, but without defining your requirements and having the vendor agree to that. Um, those requirements in writing, it, it, you can get into a potentially a, a challenge with with managing a contract. And I'm not saying that is the case, but that can be the case. Um, Do you so, think bidding um, can we, by competitors can just, is helpful? Can we? Uh, oh. I'm going to interrupt just a minute and ask um, if Steve McKenzie could add any information about this aspect of Kim Cheney saying it's a bid. I thought it was more of an information seeking of estimated cost. Uh, do you know about this information that they got from Burlington? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy to comment and, and I'll preface that by saying I'm only the city manager, so I'm usually the last to know. Uh, but I'm not aware, I'm not aware of what you're talking about, Kim. I'm not aware that this at least Barry City has a uh a, a recent proposal of any kind from Burlington Communications or anybody. That, that's well, news to me. I saw it today, including prices for 
radios for both cities and radios for um, the surrounding towns. Joe Is that and, something? Joe oh. and Doug Brent are both here. Why don't we ask them? Sorry, Doug, I didn't hear. Joe Doug Brent is here. Maybe he can answer. And I, Joe. Oh, I, yeah, right. Joe's here. Both of them. Uh, if they don't know, nobody knows. Joe, you muted. I can't help that. Uh, Doug Brent, uh, would you want to respond or just Joe? Can you hear me now, Donna? Yes. Okay. Um, I would love to see what Kim's got because we're unaware <laughs> of anything. We, ha we have not, the city of Barrie has not solicited any pricing from anybody. Well, that's interesting. That's okay. just, Somebody might have done it with our name on it, but we are, we have not requested one thing. So I don't want to spend time on this. I just wanted to, to solidify it because I hadn't heard it either. Uh, do you have other questions, Kim? Well, my initial questions were, can you give me a rough breakdown on the cost for doing the simulcast system versus what the two cities want? Uh, we're, we're trying to talk about whether or not we want to do the equipment RFP. Exactly. Versus I wanna, specific I cost. Know what it, I want to know what it's going to include and what the cost is. Well, we have a general cost in the August report, and this RFP is to nail down that question. Can Rick answer my question? Oh, what is your question, sir? I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, well, what, will what, there be a cost difference um, if we don't do a simul class radio system? It, I don't know. You mean a cost system for the radio infrastructure itself? Well, for your work. Oh, I, I'm not going to provide any more pricing without a requirements. So I, I, I need to know what I, I, it's hard for me, you know, to give a, a, a you know, a, a, a response to something where I need the requirements for. So I, anything that's less than what we're, we're doing right now. Um, yeah, it would, it would certainly, it would affect, it would affect the price. So I'm sure, but I, I, I'm not going to try to pull a number that I without having a detailed requirement. So, would there be another contract proposal with choices? If if you if you can you know put in writing what you want, I'd be happy to provide a response to it. Yes, I, I'd be happy to do that. Did Donna send you the questions I that I wanted to ask? I did, but I, I want to back up this question, Rick, because I'm taking Kim's question to another degree of detail that we're not at yet. Okay. And that this focus of this conversation is about whether the board wants to do the equipment RFP that will give us more detail, that will lead us to more exact cost, or and does the board want to do a sole source or bid it out? That's the focus of this conversation. And I'm gonna hold us to it because we've been, we need to stay on time. We have extra time, we can ramble about other things. So Kim, do you have a question dealing with the equipment RFP? Well, my question hasn't been answered. Are you gonna, Rick, are you gonna propose a separate uh, a specific contract for your work? Um, We've got one. Your RFP? Well, I have a general statement, but it doesn't include a breakdown between uh, the uh, simulcast system and the equipment for the cities. And look, any grant request has to include them both or we're not going to have communications. But I just want to know where we're going with this since, since CFMAS has uh, decided to withdraw from us, um, which is fine. If that's what they want to do, I, I don't. This equipment RFP is to fulfill that $3.9 million estimate. 
Right, so it includes the simulcast system. And the consoles, and the radios. Yes. And that's Anything else, Rick, I'm missing? Tower work. Well, you know, the, obviously construction work, maybe tower upgrades. Uh, you know, there was a number of item ones that we we identified. I, I, Kim, I, the easiest way to answer your question, I, and I did provide, you know, responses, um, but, you know, the, the easiest way to answer it is, is that I, I, one, if we can, you know, we can carve out exactly what we're, you know, those elements are. And I mean, uh, you know, what we're talking about, there are there are some sites that we've identified that was the radio sites and, and equipment requirements for uh, Barry City and for Montpelier. Um, and they were integral to uh, the regional radio network. So those could be carved out as, as, as a separate procurement um, and, and they could be done that way, certainly. Um, the, you know, the, 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 challenge is, the challenge is that you won't have a regional radio network. And so um, in order to have a, a regional radio network, you'd have, and if you do separate procurements, you're gonna have to coordinate across them. Now it's all, it's all doable, uh, I, I'm, and, and but you know, I mean, I, I don't off the top of my, I can't, I can't tell you right now what the difference in cost would be. I have to go back to the drawing board, but you know, there are elements that that wouldn't have to be drafted in a full regional uh, procurement document that would, would 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 you know be required. So yes, you would remove certain pieces, and it's going to affect the, the labor required to get the job done. But they'd be separate, like contracted so that if we go for a grant, it would be so much to the cities and so much to the CFMAS. That's a strategy you could undertake, sure. I, I think it bifurcates, though, your objective for, it certainly it changes your, your objective uh, of being a regional radio network. I mean, you could still achieve a regional radio network objective by by splitting them out and going independently, no doubt about it. You just, uh, you know, you'd have to coordinate across the uh, the jurisdictions, and 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 you know, it's all doable. Um, okay, I'm going to go to another person and come back for your other questions, Kim. Uh, Justin was next, and then I had Stephen, and then Jim. Um, this is just, I, it's just, I'm slightly changing topic. It's, it's same topic, but it's a different tack. Regarding whether we should sole source it or whether we should um, whether we should seek bids. Uh, before I say anything, I want to say I think Rick is incredibly professional and has done an amazing job. And I've read everything that he's put out, and I'm very impressed by it. Having said that, I do think I do think we should put it out to bid. Uh, it, honestly, strictly because it's the right thing to do. And I think this is a the CDPSA is an important organization. Um, I think politically. Putting it out the bid is the right thing to do. I think ethically putting it out the bid is the right thing to do. Even if ultimately we have a very strong idea that we're going to go to Televate, I think following the process is important. So that's what I would vote for. Those are my, the entirety of my thoughts on the topic. Okay, uh, Steve McKinsey. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I'm going to start with, I think the question that, that uh, Kim was asking I've skimmed um, Rick Televate's uh, proposal. I, I have not digested in any kind of detail, but my sense is that if uh, Televate completes the work in that proposal, that the costs identified in it can be broken down any way that the district or the, the authority wants so you can see what the relative costing is for different um i don't know different combinations if you will and i mean rick and rick can speak to that but i but i think uh, I'm, I'm assuming that within the scope of the rfp the cost presentation can be done in a way that will answer uh allocation of costs if you will uh, for the proposals the, or for the for the a proposed scope of work or proposed project the other comment i i have goes to the question of sole source or bid and and i respect what justin was saying but i think unfortunately um televate is a is at an extremely um competitive disadvantage 
at this point because you've already asked for a proposal from them. They have provided it for all intents and purposes. That if that that pricing information is public knowledge, and now you're now you're asking for other competitors to provide a proposal and a fee, um, and uh, uh, they have the benefit of seeing what what another competitor's price is before they even submit a proposal. That's a pretty awkward position to be in. And, and again, as much as I, I understand what um, Justin was saying, if, if Televate has the institutional knowledge by virtue of the work they have done for CF, CVPSA to date, and um, there's a comfort level uh, on the part of CVPSA with their proposal. Uh, frankly, to go through the RFP process and and to and to then select Televate for whatever reasons makes the RFP process look like it's wired. And I don't think that puts you in any better place than you are now if you make a decision to go source source. Now, having said all that, I have now been paid to say that by Rick Burke or Televate, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm giving you my perspective from having been on the consulting side of the world for 37 years and the whole competitive RFP process uh, and so on. So I offer that for insight for whatever it's worth. Thank you. Uh, Jim, I think you were next. <clears throat> yeah, I was just looking for some clarification. My... my... Head's kind of spinning a little bit here. My original question um, about who we're doing it for was partly based on maybe some misunderstanding. Uh, does your plan, Rick, and when I say plan, the whole scope of what you're proposing, does that include the Barry City and Montpelier uh, specific um, repeater sites and the new radio channel? Yes, sir. as well as the other eight towers. Yes, sir. Yeah, it was it comprehensive. Uh, the cities. So when we looked at this, we and 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 we worked very closely with uh, with, with Joe Altsworth there, you know, because we we visited sites together and we ran coverage studies um, and you know we selected sites based on Joe's knowledge of the geography and the radio coverage and you know we ran the studies, but but we put together a a regional radio network and there were. Uh, obviously, the location of the towers are specific to the geography. So there, there are towers in 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 Barry City and Montpelier and throughout the twenty towns. You know, I mean, not in every town, of course, but but yes, the goal was for a unified radio network, which is you know I, I, I highly encourage you to maintain that approach. If you you know even no matter how you go about it, you want to unify interoperable radio network. It's it'll be the best option for your responders in your community. But yeah. uh, yes, there, 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 there are specific elements that would go to the dispatch center and, and equipment for each of the each of those areas. So yes. yours includes the, the new consoles. Yes. Yes. Because I thought I thought it had been determined at some point that the cities were buying their own consoles. So your plan has the I don't know which frequency you're talking about, 155, 340 or, or but Barry City and Montpelier, I understand, are going to get licensed on a different frequency. Now, obviously, they could go to the county frequency or the regional frequency when they needed to. But that's included in yours as well, the, the licensing and so forth of the, the new, or, or at uh, least. I yes, I mean we we are not we are not. Televate is not pursuing the the license, but it could be incorporated into that that procurement so another you know the the vendor would be responsible for it uh those of you who uh, know how difficult it is to get interference free channels in the vhf band know that it's not easy about particularly above what we call the a line where you have to coordinate with canada canada says no to everything you try to coordinate with them um and, and that's and and, and it, it takes it takes an inordinate amount of time to, to license uh, interference free channels typically in the vhf band it, it can be done and, and, and it always gets done but 
but the our, our the proposal doesn't include televate finding that the, that that channel but we do really want an, a separate channel so that you know that, that we have a channel to dispatch off of for each of the cities and for and for capital fire and also uh, some some a, a network um tactical channel so you have now you can have a radio to radio tactical channel um and fire you know fire a fire ground channel and, mm -hmm. and then there would be a voice channel that would that would be on the simulcast network as well and that would require an additional frequency so i understand this is my last question i, I understand that the main thrust in barry city uh in placing of repeaters was to be able to get um in building um penetration to get out of being able to transmit out of out of a building through a wall uh, which has been a historic problem in very city um, do those repeaters also are they on the very city frequency or are they do they still function with the, the regional frequency or are they total that a totally separate system we want the ones that are designed to get them out of their buildings in the cities Montpelier and Barry we would we'd recommend that all the frequencies put in every radio so that you have interoperability you know in the event of, of any any responding entity would be able to communicate with any other so but there would be dedicated channels um for for you know for barry city for montpelier and for capital fire i mean that that was one of the intentions but all of those all of those frequencies would be program into every radio so that you could have mutual aid across your entire region. Right. But would the, the repeaters in Barry City, would they be able to accommodate the frequency as well as the Barry City frequency? And the reason I'm asking all that is I'm trying to figure out in my head, are there two systems being designed here that are exclusive of each other? Or is there one all, all one encompassing system. and one is in hmm? one system? I, I highly recommend it be one system that could be used okay. by all users. But the one system can have multi-funding, so it's no, it's no, uh, it's not contrary to have Montpelier and Barry find funding for their consoles, but still have it all interoperable. Donna, can you mute Stephen? Well, I'm, I'm sorry. To talk, so I need to let her know that. Well, while you're waiting, you're interfering. Okay. I, I didn't hear from, okay. So Jim, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm answering your question properly, but, but the, 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 again, one, one of the things that I, I, I mentioned in my, in my response, Ken, is that yes, you can designate this, these sites, this equipment, um, you know, for Barra City and and this, you know, this site and 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 radio infrastructure and this equipment for, you know, that's primarily for Montpelier and and you could do the same for for Capital Fire, um, that that could be done and 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 you know you could you know we could put an estimate of cost for doing that um, as we've done in the past for the entire network, but. Since that wasn't our original scope, that's what we didn't do. So what we're having a conversation about now is, is, is capital fire in, in or out? And I, I'm under the impression that they're, they're still in. If they're not, um, yes, maybe things change. But um, I, I, I don't, I don't know what that. I don't know the future of that. But, but yes, and the answer to your question is yes. You could separate elements out of the overall network. Now there are there is a simulcast controller that you know could be shared because you have to have a simulcast controller. That is uh, kind of the uh, that the, you would you would really don't want to have separate of those. Everybody having their own that wouldn't be you know that wouldn't be efficient financially nor operationally. So there are some common elements um, you know like the controller, uh, but but in general. Yeah, I'm not trying to suggest to go in any direction, <clears throat> one way or the other. I, I was just in the, of the impression that the cities had written a letter a few months back saying that they were going a separate direction with a separate design by one of their vendors, and I was wondering if 
that was a completely different plan from yours or whether they were incorporated into one. And I'm still a little confused on that, but maybe, I, maybe there's I don't duplicate. Know. I don't have an answer on that. I couldn't, well, I can't tell you what's been going on since. I, I can tell you from Bill Fraser's point of view and, and Brian, they're very much working as a group regionally mindsetted, but also there are some, Specific things are working directly with Barry Act because it only affects Barry and Montpelier. But that's not to make it less interoperable. So, um, uh, Doug, I would like to hear from all the board members before I uh, open it for public comment. Do you have anything you want to contribute to this conversation? You've been quiet. Uh, it's characteristically not in my nature, but um, I'm I'm really kind of stuck on this re revelation by Kim that there's um, some RFPs that have been received. And I'm kind of, I'm really curious as to where these RFPs came from, who asked for them, and because they do have a bearing on what we're doing with Rick. And, and it also kind of reflects on the, the good comments that Justin brought up. But if somebody else has already got some RFPs in there, I'd like to know who, and I'd like to know why and what. Where'd they come from, Kim? Well, it came from Brian Pete in response to a public records request. Okay. And he's apparently here. He can answer your question. Yes, he is. And you're calling them RFPs, okay. Well, I'm not sure it's an RFP. Uh, well, it's there's a proposal, a funding proposal. Well, you know, Kim, it's sort of like MOU and MOA. You know, which is it, an RFP or not? <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, if... Brian, uh, Pete, are you available? Can you connect? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Yeah, I don't know if you heard the previous conversation, uh, Doug. <laughs> Kim Cheney had brought up that he saw some vendor proposals of equipment recently. And I, as a city council, haven't heard about it. And Steve McKenzie, city manager of Barry, hasn't heard about it. Doug Brent hadn't heard about it. So maybe you have. I have no idea of an RFP. The only thing I know I turned in is the uh, every year. The, the Department of Homeland Security provides certain grant funding to each state. State has a has a pool of that money. They poll municipalities. They leave open a deadline. You can put in for items that are on an authorized equipment listing or an AEL. You have a certain amount of time to put in for the for the grants, and we submit it for grants. It's a no match funding for mobile and portable radios and for a base station. It's a DHS grant. And you got you got monetary figures from Burlington Communications for that. Yes, we're supposed to get three vendors. All right, but it has nothing to do with with the Televate activity. Yes, mm. no. No, it, it does in the sense that the Televate had request had had put it down as a priority list that we're supposed to get um, that, that it's recommended for mobile and portable radios. And so we put in the grant to get mobile and portable radios for Montpelier Police and Montpelier Fire. Well, Donna, if I may, I guess I'd uh, ask Rick, does that kind of information, does it have any bearing on your work with the potential RFP from Public Safety Authority? And yes and no. Uh, the no part is that um, uh, the the law enforcement in your region are on a different frequency band, and they have their own they have a, their own radio network. So you know we want to get those. They, we want to be sure that those two networks are are, inter are are interoperable, of course. And I'm sure you're doing console patches today or not, but um, you know. But the rate the radio. So on the PD side. Uh, base stations and radios were what right were recommended uh, based on our conversation uh, with the chief and we identified that but our focus was on the fire uh, uh, the, the firefighter the fire responders 
And, and so, you know, we focused on that particular aspect, but we certainly interviewed law enforcement and documented in there um, their requirements. On the radio side, um, yes, we, we, we came up with a number uh, uh, working, working with Charlesworth on, you know, the number of radios that would be required across the region for the <laughs> firefighters. And, and so there may be some that if Montpelier has a, uh, receives a grant and, and, and includes 10, 15, 20, 50 radios, then that would be fewer that would be required across, you know, in the overall procurement process. So um, that, that's why I say the answer is yes and no. But police radio frequencies are, are different, but the radios are the same. Well, the, the, the radio, it, it all depends what radio you buy, of course. But yeah. if you, you know, you're, you would buy a radio that's VHF and you, for, for, yes. the fi for the law enforcement and you would buy for the firefighters and the law enforcement is buying a UHF radio. Um, I'd highly recommend that you get multiband radios. They're not that much more expensive this, these days, but, but you know, um, the fire, again, the firefighter radios would also need to be, have simulcast capabilities. Um, so, you know, that you want to be sure, this is where I say you really want to define your requirements so that you're sure you're buying appropriate infrastructure. Um, Let me just say, if they got the grant, within their grant, when they go to the exact procurement, they could more specify the radio type to make sure it's more versatile. Yes. Uh, I would think that it's probably, I would think you probably have already done that. The radios are, are a lot easier than the, the, radio, the infrastructure to do. Um, uh, but the radio, you know, I, again, ideally, you know, if money wasn't a cost, I, I would recommend we go with the Project 25 radio network. We are going to be a we are going to be a 25 Project 25 compatible, capable radio network, or we won't be able to get federal dollars because that's fundamental to their right. grant requirements. So, you know, we always said we're going the Project 25 capable network approach. Um, but you know, the, the most modern, but but a Project 25 radio network also requires a more robust and expensive core element. So there are higher costs associated with going with the, you know, the, the, the more, the standard, the standardized technology, but what, what you, you know, the, the idea of a simulcast, uh, uh, a conventional uh, simulcast or an analog simulcast network meets your requirements. So it, it wasn't, you know, it, it, we, we didn't propose something that was more elegant uh, or more feature rich than you required. Um, but if we had the money, I'd still like, I'd still would recommend we go in that direction, but we don't need to at this stage of the game. We just need okay, to get, but, we but, just need to get to a, some finish line okay, eventually. Well, but, but while we're, if indeed we went ahead and said, yes, let's do this equipment RFP and we get it done in the next 50 days from the time we say yes, then within that, we start thinking more about the P25s, et cetera. We get more specific on equipment. So yeah, a lot, of, we, a lot yeah. of that conversation in detail happens within working with you on the equipment RFP. Yes. Well, okay. unfortunately, we've had a lot of those conversations. We just have to write it up yep. um, and, and, and quantify it and, and be sure that we have requirements, you know, feature yeah, but, the answer but to I'm just it, saying it, that likewise, though, within that work, some of that maybe Brent, uh, Brian for the Montpelier acquisition could actually use some of that information by the time the grant comes back and equipment gets ordered. It just to keep it connected. I, I don't know what, what, yeah. what the chief has put together, but yeah. I'm sure it's it would have value. So, uh, you know, if we write, when you write the section for the radios, you know, it's a matter of volume, you know, you're going to say, you know, we, we our radios need to be capable of, of X, Y, and Z and A, B, and C and have these features. Um, and, you know, the firefighter radios are different from uh, law enforcement radios. They got to be intrinsically safe. And, and there's a variety of features that, that um, law enforcement radios differ from firefighter radios. And so you, you designate all those elements and you write that up so that you're getting a specification. 
a lot of things have been done, and 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 there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, you know, the the the, the responding people, the people that run the radio networks, they kind of send an email. I said, I need this. Is what I need, and 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 you know, that's that's not on. If you have a vehicle already, and you're able to buy from a vendor, um, you know, within a certain without going to a competitive bid because you have an agreement with them, these things are done all the time. People just write a, you know, a, a short. Uh, I need this. Can you, you know, and get a quote for it? And it's not uncommon. Um, for the larger network, we recommend a more formal process so that you can go to the market and get multiple bids so that you can negotiate, um, you know, the best best uh, value for the region. Okay. Just keep in mind, police and fire. There are they are different though with radios and frequency. All right. Different uh, frequencies could be the same vendor radios, though, which is yes, yes, I understand that. But, but they wouldn't, you know, firefighter radios have to be intrinsically safe because that means that they're used to the other, they're involved in with water. I mean, they get wet and they get submerged. And so they, they have to have additional protections on them, and their knobs are typically bigger. And there's a, a yep. variety, there's some there there are some differences in the in 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 the radio themselves, you know. The yes. Er ergonomics yes. of them are different. Right. Uh, Doug, Brent, you have your hand up. Can you hear me now, Donna? Yes. So this, this, this conversation has been all over the place. And I, I want to just let you know, we also took part in the same grant process that Brian Pete did. This is a Homeland Security grant. I'm sure that Doug Hoyt could um, remember when he was in the job, I believe that I counted it up on the calendar. This grant process had a 19 day open to close process. This is not something that you could bring back to this committee or talk to another committee or mm -hmm. find out from this group of people or that group of people. If you're going to do it, you had to pounce on it. And Brian did it for Montpelier. I did it for our fire department. And, and put in for some fire department radios. Just like Rick said, we got the latest technology. We had to go out and get prices according to the grant. We had to seek out three prices, just like the grant says you need to do. And that's what we did. This didn't involve an RFP. We're not buying anything yet. In big, bold print, it says, don't order anything. This does not mean you've been awarded a grant. Simply put in an application and that's what we did. Um, that's what I did as part of my job description for the as the fire chief for the city of Barry. Okay, um, totally, we have totally to be really careful of this because you know what you know what they say you know what they say a camel is right a camel is a horse that was designed by committee and we got to be really careful not to do that with this project. That's all I'll say. <laughs> no, okay. you did a good job. You did a good job, Doug, of clarifying it. You know, when it's presented to us as an RFP, as opposed to the application process that you went through, then I even I can see the difference. And I appreciate that. And you're right. I've done them before. You, you do have very small windows. Thank you. I just want to thank Doug for that clarification. And I want to remind everybody that this is something that needs to be done. The camel isn't going to get any better if we fuss with it. Yes, and I, I would like to put in the soul searching in perspective, because that definitely is where I'm favorable at, is that we started with an RFP in 2019 that was huge. And when we got three vendors came back at us and we realized we have to reduce the scope. And so we did the first phase as the need assessment. The second is procurement. And then there would be a design, detailed design and implementation. If we had remembered to put some silly, simple sentences in the contract with Televate, this is open to extension for phase two, then it wouldn't be considered sole sourcing. Uh, so I really would favor that we advance the RFP for the equipment and that we do sole source and award Televate the contract. Does the board like to entertain? I would entertain a motion if the board is I'm so disposed. Okay, Stephen, yes. It's your turn. Talk. 
Well, yes, but I wanted, I was the last board member to speak on my opinion, so I did mine. It's your turn, Stephen. Okay, it's, it's highly improper that the, the financial policy adopted by the authority says that anything over 20000 must go out to bid if, 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 unless there is only one place to get the service or product. There's clearly more than one place to get this product or service. So there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, though. It's only if you're buying a product you can't get from anybody else can you buy and rebuy from the same vendor. But it's highly improper to be giving this much airtime to a competing vendor that you haven't given to a solicitation to invite other proposers in, federal, uh, inter aisle, whomever proposed before. So it's just really highly improper, and there's no way you can stretch the sole source language of the charter or the po financial policies to allow more than $20,000 to be awarded here. And there is now confusion between the taking out pieces that might be funded from the Homeland Security grants to no longer be within the work. Maybe the price will get down to $20,000, but I doubt it. And so I'm just saying that this much airtime for a competitor in a competitive bid process is highly improper and was likely to result in litigation. What's the board's pleasure? Uh, Steve McKenzie. Yeah, I guess I guess I. Again, I'm not a member of the board, but I react to Steve's comments that um, you are discussing uh, uh, how to go about your procurement, but you are not in a competitive bid process at this point in time. Uh, you're, you're trying to decide whether to go there or not, but you're not in that process at this time, and you're um, merely... Um, receiving input from Rick uh, based on the past work that he's done for the district or for the, for the authority. Uh, so. Thank you. Chair would entertain a motion. What are we looking for Donna for a motion? I mean, what do you want? The motion is to advance the acceptance of Televate's RFP proposal to I mean, proposal to do an equipment RFP. And we'll do this allowing for sole source. All right, so this, this is, this is, uh, I'm gonna stagger on my words here. It's not a proposal to award anything to Televate. It's only to ask Televate or award to Televate to put together an RFP. No, it, they have put a proposal together to do an RFP on equipment coming out of the needs assessments of our phase one. And right. it, it was attached to this agenda and it was given out last month also. Right, but it's not awarding, so, it's not awarding any funding to any provider of equipment. It's only awarding funding to Televate to do the work. To do to do the equipment RFP, to then, then would be used to get the equipment, right. It would be yeah. awarding them the $29,714 contract that went with their proposal. All right. So the other part of the issue is as far it, it, as as far as Stephen is concerned, is that it's twenty thousand dollars or more? Well, that's right, and 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 the board can decide to vote to sole source it, and then award Televate the contract for the twenty nine thousand. But just to help me refresh my memory here, the board selected Televate to provide provide the information. And it had the opportunity to look at other vendors uh, to provide this information. Yes, no? No, we no, because because we were doing work with Televate, 
we asked for him to give us a proposal to do an equipment RFP. Okay. So we never did an RFP and then they responded to it. We said, would you do this for us? And they did. Because the board said they wanted to go that next step of the engineering. We did the needs assessment. Step two was procurement. And that we found when we went after grants, our grantors said, we need more detail on the equipment. So this RFP is to give us more detail on the equipment to help us go talk people into giving us money. <laughs> okay. I guess I'd like to hear what Steve and Kim have got to say. Uh, Steve McKenzie? Uh, well, I think Kim had his hand up first. Yeah, oh, no, I'm, I just... no Doug, Doug said he wanted to hear from somebody. Yeah, Steve and Kim, either one. I don't, I don't oh, okay. care which one goes first. Okay, uh, yeah. Kim? I have a, just a question for Rick. It seems to me you've done a lot of the work already in the sense that in your assessment and the cost estimates you gave, you had some idea of what was needed the equipment and so forth to carry out the plan. Is that right? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, we visited sites and we we quantified um, in order and, and our cost modeling of it, we had to, you know, we had to insert, uh, letting integrate the the numbers of, um, and, and so that's how we came up with a cost estimate. Where we indicated that we, you know, we the numbers were soft were on the um, tower upgrades and the shelter upgrades. You know, we weren't, you know, we, we, we couldn't specifically quantify if your, if towers, you know, were stable, uh, were their loading good, and, you know, did they have sufficient loading um, for additional equipment and, and, and whether or not uh, all the shelters were there. We also quantified, you know, the need for, for um, HVA systems, there's also another fundamental thing that you we don't know, but I suspect it's good. And, and we're working in Stu Bend County right now, um, you know, and and they have to upgrade all their their power systems. They they don't have, you know, they don't have sufficient uh, voltage uh, 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 at their their tower. So they're now they're going to have to do that. So you're there are certain things that you can't do without. You know, a deeper dive, but 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 the, your, the answer to your question is is that we've identified the location of the sites um, and 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 determined you know all the required radio equipment in order to come up with the budgetary quote that we provided. So you're part way done to your RFP. Well, yes, that information would get integrated into the RFP. Um, absolutely, yeah, yeah, it has to be put in. Um, Okay, thank you. Uh, Steve McKenzie and then Jim. Yeah. Um, to, so I'm going to pile on the MOU, MA, MOA discussion, but, and I, and I do this to try to offer some help in, in terms. But the term RFP, request for proposals, is generally used when you're soliciting uh, quotations from consultants for professional services and developing a, 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 you know, responding to either scope of work or whatever. In this case, for better or for worse, Televate has prepared a response to your RFP, request for a proposal, to prepare not RFPs, but RFQs, requests for quotes. You're asking for you're asking for Televate to prepare uh, uh, to obtain uh, to, to develop specifications and a bid package to get quotes from vendors. Yes. And I and I and I I, I put that out there to maybe help provide some clarity as to the use of the terms. Okay. Uh, then Jim was the next one. <clears throat> I have a question for Steve, which actually I had it before 
you just made your comments, but that's exactly what I was thinking. It sounds like what they're writing is our specs. But my question to you, Steve, is as a professional engineer, not a city manager, um, does Rick or Televate have a unique body of knowledge right now that better suits them to write these specifications because they did the previous research? And is that something that carries some weight in terms of the chronology of requests for proposals and bids and so forth? Uh, I would say uh, the answer to that question is yes. They have inherent or institutional knowledge, if you will, of the particular um, uh, of, the, of the project, if you will, and the direction by virtue of the work they've already done already. So that gives them um, a, a, a technical advantage, if you will. But, well, but I look I, at, I was I'll, just thinking the other way, not an advantage to them, but a disadvantage to us if we're bringing someone in that doesn't already have these, the, well, yes, I mean, yes. I mean, but that advantage inures to the district, to the public safety authority. Um, in, in some respects, one could say they don't have a learning curve um, that that another competitor might have to um, account for, cost-wise, if you will, in a proposal or whatever. But I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say something now that will pro probably cause you all to groan. And I don't do it to, to 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 cause problems, but I'm trying to do it as an objective objective observer. I think your your purchasing policy, if that's what it is, is pretty clear. It it says that the the authority um, will solicit shall solicit bids uh, for purchases over twenty thousand dollars. The, the policy doesn't seem to allow a little, a lot, I'll say a lot, or if not or for any wiggle room to do something differently. And I know that's not what you want to hear. And, and, and I don't want to disfavor Televate, but I'm trying to just offer my insight as a, let's say an outside observer. And, and I know that that puts Televate at a competitive disadvantage um, if, uh, if the board chooses to um, go out for RFPs. And, and unfortunately, this is probably the discussion that should have been had at the time of, of entertaining um, a sole source to to uh, televate before they put the, together their proposal, and I apologize for you know being the skunk at the party, but hopefully you take the input with a good faith that's intended. Well, I perceive different wiggle room, but I appreciate your opinion, Steve. Thank you. If the board doesn't want to continue this discussion, just say so. Yeah, I, and I, I appreciate that. If you're going to go out to bid, then you're going to have to have a committee to make an RFP up because we didn't make an RFP to get this proposal. The board asked me to find out what it would cost. So I asked Elevate, what would it cost? Well, that's an interesting, that's an interesting comment because uh, depending on how, how you frame that RFP, it may be somewhat different than what uh, Rick and Televate have put together based on their perhaps general understanding of the request at the, at the time. So Televate could but choose. We have no staff, Steve. And we have no staff. And yeah, no, I, 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 I hear you. I hear you that we it took us forever to do the other one i mean from 2018 forward to do the one that we finally broke down to make it three parts um so and that's fine that's the board's pleasure but i think it just stops us in its tracks it's either we do yeah, something I, or we don't 
I hear you, Donna. And that's not, that wasn't my intent when I said that. Um, yeah, no, I'm just telling you where I'm coming from. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yep. It comes back to the board. If there's no motion, then we should just move on. <clears throat> okay. So we are going to tell. No, 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 no. I would like to make a motion for the purposes of discussion. No, I know. Not that we haven't had enough already, but now we're getting to the point where we're going to either put the paint on the wall or not. Okay. All right. So I would like to move that we would move forward with uh, awarding. Um, Televate with the contract to provide public safety authority with the material for RFPs. RFQs. RFQs, right. That's what I meant to say. Is there a second to that? Uh, Kim, are your mouse moving? Are you talking? I said I would second it for discussion purposes. Thank you. All right. We have a motion to award Televate with a contract to provide public safety authority with the materials for an RFQ. Equipment RFQ? No, just RFQ. Okay. Further discussion. Um, the only Jim? consideration I have is our system really needs to move forward. Um, and if we're talking about a grant, there's going to be further processes to, there's going to have to be competitive bids to. Uh, to put this thing together. So all things said and done, I'm with Doug Brent. I think people need to get this done. There's public safety and I think there's enough fuzz about the policy so I can live with voting in favor of the motion. Any other board discussion? Jim? I just had one question going back to the question of uh, whether well, we can have a soul bidding on it. Um, when we did the original um, study, we had two proposals on that. Were those proposals, did they include all three phases for each one of them? We had three, uh, the initial, and then two came back when we broke it down. And one was totally unaffordable, <laughs> as well as we, when we did uh, different interviews, we felt very strongly that we felt for the Vermont size, we had more, uh, we get more attention from television. Well, well, my question is, we have. did the, did both of the proposals that we had, and I remember having them, I forget the name of the other company, but. Um, Federal engineers or something. Right. Did both proposals include the needs assessment? And then I, I think there was an engineering phase and then there was the uh, RFP development. They came, we, we put it in as one scope of work. And they came back saying, whoa, it's really this. And when we said, wow, we don't have that kind of money, then they said they could break it up. And we selected to go with the needs assessment. So the proposal for the RFP part of it has actually already been sent out to, to more than uh, television. Uh, I, in the broadest terms, but that was in 2019. So well, I'm just saying that we're yeah. we're essentially saying 
okay, we 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 bought half a loaf. Now we're going back and buying the other loaf. We should we right. shouldn't, so we shouldn't have to go to a whole new grocery store. Well, um, that's why it was our mistake well, well, look, of not yeah, putting well, a contingency statement in this contract that we might opt right. to do the next phase. We we missed it. We missed it. I I think we're just looking for something to be able to hang our hat on. Is are, are we blatantly violating the the bylaws, or is there some justification for it? And um, I, I'm inclined to say that, and I know this is not specifically the motion on the table right now, but Delevate certainly has a leg up um, on the knowledge of the system. And I'm not sure someone coming in at this stage of the game trying to be a competitive price would be able to do the homework to arrive at where they are now. Um, and, and secondly, I, I think this was contemplated in the original proposal, um, but um, so anyway, that's, I'm comfortable going with Delevay. All right, any further discussion from the board? Yeah, I'm just waiting to speak. Uh, Stephen, you shared your opinion, it's board discussion. No, it's any other board Madam board Chair, members? point of order, Madam Chair, there is a, a motion on the floor and the discussion has ended. Public comment. I will buy it up in litigation, I assure you. If you proceed without adhering to your policy, I will tie it up in litigation. And you will undermine the Steven, purpose of this. Stephen, uh, you you have no no interaction here, please. Anything else from the board? All right. All in I'm favor, just trying to find a. Donna, could I have just a second? I'm trying to find the sole source. Here it is. If the board of directors determines there is only one possible source for a proposed purchase, it may waive the bid process and authorize purchase from the sole source. Right, right. We've quoted that several times. Yep. Okay. Well, I wanted to look at the words, and I don't yep. think we. I can't say that there's only one possible source. So I think we should have a bid. I'm changing my mind now that I've read the policy. Well, uh, all right. Everybody will vote the way they want to vote. All those in favor, say aye. It sounds we're going to have a roll call vote anyway, so let's just do a roll call. Uh, Doug? Yes. Justin? He's muted. Sorry. Uh, no. Kim? No. Jim? Yes. And Donna is yes. It's three to two. It passes. Okay. So next. Thank you all for being so uh, appreciative of lots of questions, lots of good information. And uh, Rick, thank you for being here. It's really essential to have your information. Thank you. Uh, next we have on our agenda is Jim's presentation. And- Donna, could you please mute Whitaker? Uh, yeah, I just have to go to another screen and I lose you. So uh, Jim, let me get your, uh, you work to get your system up. Supposedly, I've authorized you to share. And I, will... I see share screen down there, so. Good. Anyway, th what, what I'd like to do is to make a request for um, $3,995 uh, to um, help buy a training prop that Barry City uh, has been raising some money to buy. Um, there's, they've raised roughly $3,000 now to buy a training prop that um, I had originally um, started the fundraiser and got some money from a, a local bank. Uh, and the proposal was to have this training prop um, 
for the area fire department. So, but before I, I <clears throat> before I, I get into the specifics of it, I just wanted to preface the request um, <clears throat> with some comments on the recent budget vote. Um, <clears throat> we we really don't have a huge amount to show for what cap for what uh, Center for Mount Public Safety Authority has done over eight years in terms of tangible, concrete, um, specific things that we can say that we've actually accomplished. I realize there's a terrific um, radio study that was done, uh, but if that ends up sitting on a shelf collecting dust, um, unfortunately, it doesn't do the firefighters any good, it doesn't do the police officers any good, it doesn't do the taxpayer any, any good. But yet, the voters approved our budget by an overwhelming margin, so that tells me that in general, the, the voters are still interested in pursuing something in the regional public safety arena. Um, so with that in mind, I think we need to push the reset button a little bit, realize that our first attempts uh, were unsuccessful, and come up with a slightly different plan to, to, to move forward with whatever regional um, cooperation we can we can accomplish um, <clears throat> excuse me so to that goal i think we need to be able to set some long-term goals but as well as some short-term goals we, we need to be able to get some points on the scoreboard to say that we've accomplished stuff um, there's a terrific um, effort made being made for this radio system and it really is needed but it's a long-term goal, and, and I think we need something that people can, can put into the narrative that they have accomplished this already. And to that, um, I think we need to have to start doing some, some things immediately that gives value to the first responders uh, for what we're doing. Um, I, I thought that um, um, Brent's uh, resignation pointed out that the need to have public safety people more involved with the board. I think we need to do some reorganization, uh, restructuring of the board to have some more pe public safety people involved in it. If if we don't have public safety people on our side, this will never work. I was involved in sh in killing a regional ambulance uh, proposal when I worked for Barry Town. They had an eight town plan. And it was, I won't go into all the details uh, of how we made it fail, but they didn't have the public safety people behind the, the ones that were doing the work in Barry Town. They didn't, they didn't have us behind them. And so we worked real hard to, to have it not happen. So I think there's some lessons to be learned there. But what I'm proposing um, is that we start doing things that the public safety people will recognize as being worthwhile. And, and that's why I'm suggesting that we fund um, a piece of equipment that Barry City uh, Fire Department is, is looking to obtain. It's something that can be used by all fire departments in the area, but certainly specifically by Montpelier and Barry City. It's also something that the police department can use. Um, so with that, I will see if I can figure out how to um make this thing work uh well it didn't bring up what i was hoping it to bring up i thought uh, it didn't bring up my youtube channel so i thought it was trying to push share i thought i was going to bring that up but let me see if i can figure out the, the, if, you, if you bring that up on your screen before you try to share it and then go to share well, I don't know. When I watch the video on it today, you push share and it bring the stuff up that was already on your screen. But okay. um, let me just bring. Well, um, I have my YouTube stuff up. Let's see if that plays. Can you see that? No. Is there any playing on there? It doesn't no. sound like you're seeing anything. You're not seeing anything, right? Did I lose you? We can hear you. We can see you. Uh, all right. Wow. So you're not seeing any video then, right? No, 
so when you hit shared screen, does your screen come up? Let me try it now, see if I... Um... You think the word you were looking for, Donna, is desktop. Thank you. <laughs> The desktop screen. Yeah, yeah but it's, when I hit shared screen, it just brings up something totally different. So anyway, I will. Uh, well, but uh, then whatever it brings up, you might look at some sub branch of it and you might find it. Yeah. No, no. Is, is it the shared screen at the bottom of the. Uh, bottom well, that's of the all right. I, Zoom page. Or it's shared screen on the bottom of the YouTube page. Uh, it's a bottom. Uh, it's funny because it's running because I can hear it, but um, let me just see if it's. Uh, can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Okay. I'd like to, I wonder there? if you could. Oh. I I'll just send it to you guys, but uh, the the. The prop is a forcible entry prop. It's a, it's a great big steel uh, frame door that's designed for uh, training firefighters um, on how to um, force doors with, with the very specific tools that they have. Um, the, the video that I wanted to show you was uh, not only of the tool, but was of a fire that they took over two minutes to be able to get in the front door with, with the fire coming out of the second floor window. Um, it may seem like a simple skill, but it's something that, that needs to be practiced. And there's, there's very specific um, methods that are used. Um, this is something every fire department around here does not get anywhere near the, the, the practice that they need because unfortunately when you practice forcible entry, you have to damage something. This is designed that it has a replaceable uh, component that that gets broken in the the forcing the entry, but it just gets replaced. It's a piece of two by four. Um, it also has an attachment on it that is used by the police department for doing um, battery ram um, entrances. I know the no knock um, search warrants are kind of something in a question, um, but there's still situations where that they they still have to force a door to get in and they have little different needs than we have when we open a door we want to control where that door goes because it lets oxygen into the fire police officers as i understand it and it also has to do with whether they do it in front of the door or to the side of the door but police officers want that door to open up to be able to see immediately what's right behind it so it's a very different technique but this tool or prop works for both um so i think this would be a very small gesture that that you know, we've spent some money on some some dispatcher training, um, but this would be a tool that would immediately get the attention of the firefighters in the area and hopefully the police officers as well, um, that says, well, maybe there are some areas that we can expand into that some of them our public safety authority can expand into that we can start some conversations and start um, working together on, on other areas that, that may not have, um, you know, any contentious issues or, or required, at the, you know, to, to find uh, difficult funding and grants and so forth. So uh, I'm asking that uh, $3,995 be um, provided um, to be combined with the funds of Barry City Fire Department. It's actually Barry City Firemen's Club. Um, I think that's who's holding the money right now um, so that we could buy the prop and, and this would be something that would be transportable um, between the departments or and discussing it with Barry City Chief um, that they would be able to come over and use it in our building. Um, that was their, their choice. And what's the full cost of the prop? You said that I got the amount you wanted to request. Yeah, it's um, it's seven thousand. It's in seven thousand dollars. I forget the exact specific number, yep. but okay, set roughly seven thousand dollars. So, I wish I could have played that video. Have the various chiefs said that they would use this? 
um, two, two or three of them are on with us right now. We can ask them. Chief Brent, do you think this is a worthwhile piece of equipment to get? Uh, Justin's got his hand up, so maybe we'll go there and then maybe Brent will join. Okay. Go ahead, Justin. I, I'm just curious if this is something that I think it's a really good idea. I think Jim's point about being able to show that we're doing something and a, assuming that this is going to be used across the region, like this is what, it's what we exist for, right? Um, the only thing I would say is like maybe we could like send out the video and vote on it next week so we have time to ruminate and just make it a really quick discussion next week with the, I mean, next month, I mean. I guess the only concern I have is to have the understanding that everyone is going to have thought about it and have their votes ready and we can just have a vote next time. You know what I mean? So we don't uh, so we don't jam up our agenda. Okay. Uh, Doug Hoyt, your hands up. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with what Justin said. Uh, Jim, if you could send out the link uh, so that we all can look at it. Uh, but I guess I would also, uh, keeping in mind of our fiduciary responsibility, get some sort of something in writing that identifies what the item is, how much it costs, and where it's going to go and who's going to use it so that when we get challenged by somebody, at least we'll have some written record. I mean, you, nev you, never, know, you never know where these challenges are going to come from. Donna, I think I've got a connection when you're ready for me. Oh, great. Yes. Go ahead, sir. By all means, any of these training props are, are more than necessary. The one that we've been using in the past few years, we get in the lower part of the state of Vermont. We have to send somebody down to pick it up, bring it back. And then we have to bring, send somebody down to take it back when we're done. And um, certainly having something like this available to the area would be, um, be, be very uh, useful. Okay, so we're going to put this on the agenda for next for April. And meanwhile, Jim's going to try to distribute it. And if not, we'll work out the technic technical difficulties and make sure we can show it next month. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you all for staying. We're like oh, 45 minutes over time. Um, and we need to talk about uh, the Open meeting law violations. Uh, Steve has, I thought was filed one, but it turns out there's actually two. And one is the minutes of February uh, Public Safety Authority board meeting was not posted within 10 days. It was an unintentional error. I just, I finally got them from Brent and then I forgot about them. <laughs> so I did get them posted. Uh, the Orca's recording gets online about three days. If like it's a Thursday meeting, it's posted by next Monday. So that was there, but the minutes were not. So I would definitely say it was unintentional error and the correction would be to ensure that it doesn't happen again. Uh, a transition between Brent being secretary and right now me filling in, I really need somebody to be secretary. <laughs> Uh, and is there any volunteers, even just between now and next six months, you know, a little window. Come. Justin, is that a volunteer? Do it, and I'm going to hate every second of it, but I will do it because you do a lot of work, Donna. Okay, great. It, getting them posted is the, is the thing. It's really... Um, yeah, okay. I just need somebody, Donna, let's just connect this week and you just give me a quick tutorial about the things that I need to do. Okay, okay, right. terrific. Uh, thank you. And now the other piece of the open meeting law violation that I got on this second was a link to the download of the video. Uh, I don't have a link to the download. We post all of our recorded meetings is ORCAs and they're posted on the YouTube channel. I know that there have been some meetings, it turns out, I only found out today, that Brent had been recording on Zoom and giving Steve a copy, but it has not been anything posted to the public. And the idea of having a public record is that it's available to the public. And ORCA is the one that we depend on to do that. So, um, 
that was there. Now, there was another one that I got just Monday. Appealed to the head of the agency. So at that point, Stephen is insisting that we change the mode of the copy of the meeting so that he can download it. And the statute says upon request, the custodian of the public records shall promptly produce the record for inspection or a copy of the record. The custodian has the choice to produce a record for inspection or a copy of the record. And we have the record for inspection posted through ORCA, recording is made for them. I don't have the capacity to take ORCA's recording and do anything with it, and I don't think we have to. If the board agrees with that, and you feel that indeed this has meant the, the meeting of the law, then a motion would be to accept that indeed the request for public record copy of the video was denied because they were given the option to have an inspection of the record by going online to YouTube. I want to speak to this, Donna. Yes, yes, Stephen, go right ahead. So the you're, I believe you're misreading or misinterpreting the law. Anyone is allowed to ask for a copy of a record. And this is a record created in the course of agency business. And it's the requester's option, not the producer's option of whether a copy or inspection only. And the, fa the fact that YouTube does not allow downloads that can be played offline uh, means that, and I, despite what you informed the board that Orca said that Brent recording interfered with their recording, I confirmed that that was untrue. It, it was a flat out lie and that Orca encouraged us to make a backup recording uh, or have Brent make a backup recording in case their recording failed. That's why I asked you to make a recording tonight. And I've just filed another open meeting violation because re you refused to make a recording tonight. So I, I'm, I've had my wits end with your uh, flagrant violations of law. Uh, well, I was advised one is that when whatever format you have your recording in, you do not have to change that to another format. Uh, and that I indeed do not have a place to store all these recordings. Our Zoom account has a very limited storage. And that's the wonderful thing about Orca is that all of that gets stored online. It's there. I don't have the capacity on my computer. I don't want to be the custodian of a second copy. And therefore, I've been advised by Vermont League that says, produce it in the form it is in. I don't have to change that format. Now, what happened was I never said Brent couldn't copy the Zoom. I was told when I started the Zoom late in the meeting, I cut off Orca and they told me not to start Zoom. That's what they told me. They told Brent something else. They told Brent something else. I can't, I can only tell you what they told me the time that I ruined their recording. <laughs> So if the board wants somebody to make copies of Zoom and store it and be the custodian forever and ever, then fine. Otherwise, we have used Orca and that's what I would prefer. Yes, Jim. Madam Chair, I believe you've met the legal burden and I move that we go on to the next agenda. Well, I believe because this appeal was to the head of the agency, the board has to make a motion. Donna, couldn't you upgrade the uh, Zoom account so you can make a recording and just, because I know some people do. But that's not enough. You still have to, for Stephen, you have to go and make another copy. He can't deal with it in the format it's in. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, you, and then the you, Zoom account doesn't become open to everybody. That's the other problem with it. You have to give everybody yeah. access to it. And the okay. whole idea of a public record is everybody, not just Stephen, has access. Yeah. Anyone who requests a copy, you can send the link and they can download the copy. And it, it, 
it's not it's not complicated at all. We've done it through Christmas. A lot of things aren't complicated and you can ask for, but that's not the standard of public records. That's the board. If the board wants to do Zoom and somebody wants to take it over, go right ahead. I'm not going to be the custodian. I'm not going to be in charge of it. I'm unclear of the technology. I thought, I thought if this meeting we could have pressed record and anybody could look for that. No, you record. have to give them access. Well, it goes into you your account. Them? Nobody, not everybody, can get into your account. Thank heavens. You have to give no. them access. Versus if it's on Orca, you can. Uh, Orca does it. You go to YouTube. You just type in on YouTube. CVPSA minutes, and you get all sorts of minutes. You can even put the exact day in, and it'll pop up. It's right there. Well, I I need a technical education, I guess, to vote on this. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll follow up with that. That's fine. Did you say that Orca provides? It's, oh, they do not. Orca provides it. They're right here. They record and they post it within the five days. Like the, our meetings on Thursday, it's usually posted on Monday, if not before. And it's posted in YouTube. It's open to everybody. So what's the problem? Stephen wants to download it. And Orca, a YouTube, you can't download it. That's what he says. I, I've never tried, so I don't know. You can take YouTube and you can identify that video and recall it anytime that you want to. Yep. Yep. Coming in on your computer. Yep. And and, and which is yeah. what I did tonight. My videos, but I couldn't find them. Yep. But that was because of the Zoom. I, I can find it fine off the of Zoom. Oh. Maybe again, it's late. So everybody think about that right now. Orca is our recorder. It's a recorder for the city council. It's quite adequate. Um, is there anything you else on the agenda? If, if you want to manage a Zoom account, Brent now has it. And the official one tonight, I'm using mine. Uh, Brent has the official account that can be housed somewhere else. If somebody uh, wants to volunteer to do that and electronically smart. Then you can do that. Uh, Doug, you got your hand up. I'm sorry I missed you. No, I just barely put it up. Okay. okay. Uh, in the interim, can you get something in writing from the Vermont League regarding this issue uh, on recordings? Oh, they're hesitant about putting anything in writing, but I will try to make it there. I'll try to do as best I can with lots of direct quotes for sections. Well, if they can't or won't, can you get it from the Secretary of State? Well, I mean, you want to say that ORCA is enough? Is that what you want them to say? Yes. What do you want them to say? I want to say what it is that we're doing or not doing that okay. interferes with Mr. Whitaker getting this. Well, getting the downloads, he, he wants a specific thing. Okay. Yeah. What are right. what are our obligations and are we meeting those obligations? Well, what they told me was we do not have to change the format. And so right now the format is in a YouTube video and not in a MP4 that Stephen wants. Yeah. Zoom is an MP4 recording. Yeah, MP4 recording. Isn't that what I said? I think Doug's got a good idea. Let's get it in writing. Okay, I don't think they'll do it in writing, but. Okay, if the league won't do it, then the Secretary of State's office ought to be able to do okay. it. Okay, I mean, they'll. Okay, they'll advise, but they won't put it in writing, I don't believe. But I'll ask. How do you advise without putting it in writing? They talk to you, they give you advice. They're not. Your individual lawyer, like your lawyer you pay for and you get an individual statement of law. They advise. Okay. Okay, I, I will seek more information. I will seek just, more information. We're just trying to abide by the law. Yeah. And 
to put this to rest. That's all. Okay. And I don't disagree. If somebody. I move we adjourn. Okay. Oh no! I want to say. <laughs> Unless I'll there's second. any objections, we will adjourn by unanimous consent. Thank you all for your attention. Good night. Night. Good night. 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 night.